Hello and welcome to this quick video. This is to show you the complete process I go through, or I've just gone through, to upgrade this model here. This is uh, an Atomar Sea Dolphin. It's been flying on 2.6.1 iNav. I'm just about to flash it to iNav 3.0. So I thought, let me actually capture how I've done this. The whole kind of upgrade process takes about 10 minutes, and I'll show you that in a, in a moment. But it, that's with me banging on. I'll put time codes down below if you want to jump to that thing in particular. Uh, all of the setup steps and all the things you need to think about are actually covered in the release notes in quite a lot of detail. As I'm making this, there isn't a huge amount of information about iNav 3.0 in the detailed wiki documentation that is playing catch up with all the new stuff that is in iNav 3.0. This is part of a little playlist, so if you're interested, you can go and have, check out the playlist. There's other videos in there as well. Uh, the other one that's in there right now is about how the auto level stuff works. Uh, I would heartily recommend, if you're going to be upgrading to iNav 3.0, make yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and sit down and actually read the release notes. There is a massive amount of changes, and there's all kinds of stuff in there, and every time I reread the release notes, I can spot something else. So I'd recommend, before you do the update, uh, read the release notes and make sure you're completely familiar with it. The upgrade process is fully documented. The iNav team don't recommend that you import a, the full dump uh, of your iNav 2.6, 2.61 into iNav 3.0. Uh, some of the things and the way things sh work have changed, uh, but there is a way that you can do things like uh, set up the modes and your on-screen display and things using an edited diff all file, and that's the way I'll show you how to do it. Although, to be honest, the first couple of upgrades that I've done here, uh, I've just treated it like a brand new install and just made a note of how everything was set. Um, I always would use a full chip arrays when going to a major release like this of iNav, so when we flash it in a moment, you'll see me use full chip arrays. Uh, don't forget to remove your prop, a safety thing. Uh, when you flash it with the settings, it is going to have the outputs turned on by default, and if you power it up at any point from the battery, if you have hiccuped and made a mistake, you don't want this starting up on the table. So just a word to the wise, remove the prop before you go through the process. Now, if you already have iNav set up, as I have on here, uh, what I'd recommend is go into iNav Configurator and go down and do both a dump and save that text file out somewhere safe, and also do a diff all and save that somewhere else as well. The diff all is the file that we're interested in that we can edit to do a chunk of the configuration in iNav 3.0 for us just to speed things up. But again, as I said, I'm not using that process myself a lot. I just kind of run through it because I've set up so much iron now it's pretty straightforward, but I'll show it for the sake of the video. Once you have that file set up, you can edit it and leave a couple of things in. Uh, you're not going to copy everything across. That's potentially uh, not going to be your best bet. So here we have the original diff all. This is what I've just saved on the computer. This is all the information in there. I have deleted everything apart from the stuff on the right hand side. In the documentation, it says that you'll need the servo stuff, which is this bit here, uh, and the serial, which is a little bit further down, where are you? There we go. You need the serial stuff, uh, the auxiliary stuff, and the OSD stuff as well. Those are the things that you should leave in here. I am cheating a little bit. I'm also leaving a little bit of the master file. The master file, or the master section, in the original one is quite big, but I'm going to just reset this kind of stuff up. So I'm just leaving the accelerometer calibration numbers in here just to make it easier to do the flashing. So with that done, we've now got that file ready. Let me jump on the computer and show you how I've set this thing up in about 10 minutes from cold. So here we are on the computer, downloaded version 3.0 of the configurator, and we're going to flash the plane that's currently on the old version. So first thing we're gonna do is plug the USB cable in. I can do it around the microphone. And what we need to do is just confirm the target that we actually need. So what we'll do is we'll connect. It won't like it because it's the wrong version of iNav. But if we type in version in here, standard stuff, we're looking for the target. That is the target that we want to actually flash it. So 4011 SE, which is kind of what I expected. So what we'll do is we'll go into the firmware flasher, select 
uh, M on the keyboard will shortcut us to Matec 411SE. There it is. Select 3.0. We'll do a full chip array. It's important to do full chip arrays uh, like this. We don't want any little settings hiding in there that was going to mess things up. Load firmware, we get a massive list of stuff you can read. Uh, again, recommend reading all of that. Hit flash firmware, the board will rebuild into DFU and away you go. Now again, if it doesn't work in DFU, you can go and check out my uh, Zadig video. I'll put a link down below. Uh, it doesn't take too long to flash and this is going to reset everything. It's gonna blow it all away. And then we're gonna go and essentially be configuring a brand new flight controller. But because we've done the diff all and we've edited it, and we've also done the dump from 2.61 as well as, as it was on my plane, We've got all that reference. Taking the screenshots is also really handy. I, as kind of a, a guy that tends to learn visually, find it a lot easier to just have a screen with the uh, pictures on, on my phone or something and just match them up. So there we go, that's done. Programming successful. Give the board a moment to reboot. And then we'll click on connect. And it's gonna ask us what we have. Now, this is slightly different. Uh, we can either have an airplane with a tail or airplane without a tail. Now that, my uh, plane looks like it has a tail, but it doesn't, it's actually a flying wing. It's got vertical stabilizers. So we're gonna click on that. Now, what we can do is uh, you'll notice if I just step through there, standard stuff to set everything up is gonna be going through all the stuff on the left-hand side. There we go. So I would go and start with calibration to go with anything else. Now we can do it as though it is a brand new setup and it actually doesn't take long, particularly if you know iNav well. It's a very, very quick and easy setup process. Just run through all these tabs. However, we have cheated a little bit. We uh, That's Control A, Control C. We have edited this. Again, I've left in the accelerometer uh, calibration stuff uh, just because that actually seems to work. But we're going to the CLI and Control V to paste it all in, hit enter. And there it all goes in. You're watching for anything saying that it's not happy. We'll hit save and hit enter. And that will do a chunk of the update. Again, I've seen other people put entire dumps in. It's not recommended. Uh, we now see that the accelerometer, you know, we've suddenly got um, things kind of working in here. Uh, however, we need to go through everything. Calibration is now magically set. So that's going to save us on that. And actually in the setup, we can see it's pretty flat and level. You can see the slight <laughs> uh, bend on my desk. Uh, so we don't need to worry about that. Mixer is also set up in the right way. So that is good. So that's all been set up for us. Outputs. Uh, be careful about this, the output is going to be enabled for when you plug your battery in first time, but it has also got the middle offsets. This is really important uh, if you're coming from another plane, it just means that when it flies first time, that calibration, the server water trim is already there. Presets, we don't need to worry about now because we, they've kind of gone. We, auto tune is pretty much mandatory now when you go and fly it. Uh, port settings are set up, our GPS is enabled. It's not happy right now because it doesn't have power, but our VTX IRC tramp is set. All that stuff has been set from that import of that little file. Configuration is one where we do need to spend a little bit more time. We do need to make sure that all this is set right, that the numbers are okay for the power stuff. And we also just need to double check that this thing is turned on at the bottom. Continuously trim servos on a fixed wing. As you fly in any kind of stabilized mode, uh, it will be automatically trimming the servos. So when you go into something like manual, which is something I fly a lot with iNav, the servos will be automatically trimmed. If you turn this on, you don't have to do that servo auto trim step because it is actually trimmed for you uh, via the flying in a level mode. And again, I've got a video on that. Uh, check out the other video in the series. Failsafe uh, is set to return to home now. Let's definitely make sure it does that. That's kind of the whole point of having the GPS and stuff on. Again, some more of this could be left in the file for diff all so that it, it works in the right way. However, for me, I'm kind of going to follow the advice. And to be honest, 
the first time I set this up I didn't use the default edited file and it wasn't that much longer. So that's configuration done. Uh, not much else in here we have to worry about. Everything else is very, very similar. Obviously, the board and sensor alignment needs tweaking. Uh, you do it through uh, level pitch trim in the CLI. Uh, I actually do need to do that. So let's do that quickly. So I need to... Let me get it first. Let's see what it's set to. Probably set to zero by default. Yeah, it is. Uh, what we'll do that is we'll set it to 8, so that means 8 degrees nose up, which is what it had to be in 2.1 to fly. Okay, let's save that out. Pit tuning, wouldn't worry too much about that. Definitely set yourself up an auto-tune setting so you can fly okay. Uh, advanced tuning, we're not going to worry about. Programming, we're not going to worry about. Receiver, uh, by leaving uh, the TAER, that's already mapped, so that should be good. Modes is where we're going to need to spend a little bit of time. Um, just to double check that everything has come across okay. It looks good to me because of the diff. So I would just go through and double check it. Make sure that you are happy with absolutely everything. Uh, servo auto trim is here by default. We can get rid of him. We're not going to use servo auto trim. Uh, we have got auto tune left on. The only thing I'm going to add is for the bit for horizon channel 5 is I'm gonna add auto level and that is just gonna mean that when it's flying in horizon mode so my three modes that I fly in regularly are horizon mode that's kind of for the post auto launch stuff then manual is how I fly it most of the time I do have nav position hold as my third position on that particular switch it does now mean that when I'm in horizon mode it is automatically going to do the auto level let's save that out OSD most of this should be set via the stuff that was imported and there it is it's kind of laid out that's kind of how I had it before big difference here is we need to upload stuff uh, we need to upload the new font there is lots of new stuff in here and we need to make sure we've got it all so one of the big things that I talked about at the beginning is making sure that you upload the font it takes a moment to do all this and then we're kind of getting to the end of everything we're almost at the point where we can go to the field and fly it make sure it's happy and go through the auto tune nearly there There we go, it'll reboot, so it will use the new font file. Connect one more time. And at that point, we're in pretty good shape. So, the other thing I would do in here is I would then do um, a diff all and a dump in here and then save those files down for future reference uh, for our own interest because in the next video I'll actually take it out to the field we'll do the auto tune and have a look what happens there let's have a look at the PID tuning and we can see uh, how it started off for comparison purposes so that's how it's currently set uh, derivative is set to zero again derivative has come back in this uh, we'll have a quick look at the rates as well uh, and that's how they are set. So that's PID gains and that's rates and expo. So that's it, set up. It's that quick. Even if you don't use the full dump file and even if I hadn't done all those import stuff, probably the thing that take me the longest would have redoing the calibration. And if you have any issues, to be honest, I'm tempted to redo the calibration anyway. It, just treat it like a new uh, installation. It only takes an extra five minutes and it means that there's absolutely nothing inherited from your previous build that might cause you a problem. So one thing you may have spotted in all the setup on here is that this is the old style of um, representation of the plane. Now this changed in 3.0. Now interestingly this is one of those kind of weird things despite the fact that in the mixer we've loaded it from the diff file. There it is. Uh, this uh, is kind of one of those weird things and a great example of why we have to be really careful when you're uploading these things. And sometimes, in my opinion for this thing, it's actually better just to treat it like a brand new installation. If I go airplane, load and apply, 
and actually apply again the same settings but with from within iNav 3.0 then when it reboots and come back hopefully we should see we now have the plane icon so just be aware of those kind of little wrinkles in this personally I would recommend just import the on-screen display, just import the modes and go through and set up everything else using the screenshots as the reference to make sure that things like the modes and OSD layouts are exactly how you do it. Trying too much to import something like the default, even the edited version uh, with what I was doing before can sometimes cause you to have slightly odd, weird problems. So there we have it, very, very similar to the setup that I've already gone through in quite a lot more detail in the iNav for Beginners 2020 series. Uh, there are a couple of major differences. The major ones are, of course, for fixed wing, how the auto level stuff is done. Again, there's that separate video, which is part of the playlist below, but I've also briefly covered it as part of that as well. Uh, I would then, on the bench, check, power everything up, make sure that the GPS comes on, make sure that the radio is working okay, the control surface is still working in the right direction, and that everything looks fine on the bench also make sure that you can arm it once you get a gps lock and run the motor once you've done that then you're pretty much ready to go to the field i also uh, in mine i upload uh, two files one which is uh, the settings to increase the roll rate in things like angle mode um, and also do things like set my auto launch settings so they're set how I want. Again, the auto launch stuff is the same in iNav 3.0 as in 2.6, 2.61. So my auto launch uh, video is in that iNav for beginner series. Uh, so join me in the next video where we'll take it to the field. Now we've got a little view of what the rates and the tuning is. Let's see how the new auto tune works in practice and uh, see how this flies first time on iNav 3. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.